So good evening, uh, everyone. Once again, I welcome you officially once again to this episode number eighteen of twenty-six episodes that we have designed or planned for the year twenty twenty-two, the first half from first Jan to thirtieth Jan. And uh, I hope you are enjoying this series. As usual, once again, apologies for being late. Uh, my opening finished ten minutes later. I'm sorry for that. Let's begin. Uh, as usual, all my presentations will always begin with thanks to the Lord Almighty who has given me much more than what I deserve. And when it comes to finance, of course, uh, no uh, thanks is lesser for my dad who has been instrumental in teaching me the clinical part of finance. So thank you, dad. I miss you. It's almost close to three years that I miss, uh, we lost him. So this is my brief CV. You all know about it. Won't waste much time over here. My MBA in finance management and of course my 24/7 with my dad since for so many years helping have a better insight into a few things. So what is the topic for today? Today's topic is again I usually pick up the trending and the hot uh, topic. Usually last week it was on LIC IPO uh, and uh, fitness associated with that. Today's topic is uh, the RBI <laughs> bomb. Shell and the Fed uh, thing that is happening all over the world, of course, uh, influencing the markets as well. The inflation monster, uh, caution or precaution matters. So this is the topic for today. So we'll be dealing a bit about inflation because uh, inflation, in simple language, if we say, is one thing which eats up into our savings, which eats up into our industry, which decides the way we behave, which decides the way we spend, which decides the way we invest. Which decides the way we get output. There are so many things that are dependent on inflation in a normal middle class family. Of course, it matters for all the social strata. I'm not saying uh, somebody is immune from it, but uh, mostly you can say the middle class is the one that bears the major brunt of it. The lower class still has a lesser spectrum of wish horses. The higher class uh, doesn't. Have much of difference uh, in totality if we look at it. So it is the major uh, middle class which bears the major brunt. So let's uh, look at today's topic. It is uh, inflation, and we discuss the same today. In short, so we all know a lot of things have been happening because of the Russia-Ukraine crisis as well, which is responsible for inflation all across the world. Major exports, major imports were held. Which were being done to these countries. Russia is not a small country. It was Ukraine versus uh, any other uh, so previously Soviet Union country. Maybe much of difference would have happened. But Russia is a bigger country. There were a lot of financial sa sanctions by United Nations and, of course, uh, under the garb of United Nations by the U.S. and the Western world and especially the European world, of course. So, but uh, the the only thing is that Russia didn't uh, seem to get affected by all that, and the war is still on. So, because of all this uh, crisis, uh, we saw sharp spike in the prices of oil, nickel, aluminium, zinc, copper, and even wheat. So, this is the reason for if you are facing it. And even if one uh, thing uh, you can say makes a difference, the rest of the things get affected, and that is where the problem comes. So, the jump in prices of wheat may not affect India, of course, because our uh, domestic uh, Requirements are too much, uh, and the production is also equally. But for many other commodities, we are still dependent upon other countries for imports. So definitely, if you have to import uh, at a higher price, they'll be sold at a higher price, and that eats up into the budget usually. So, of course, the international oil prices uh, uh, went up hugely. India was a little lucky that it still uh, managed to get a. Oil at discount from Russia, but uh, of course uh, certain things uh, don't uh, matter at all uh, in that regard because the longer we keep on staying to it, the diesel and the oil prices uh, went on right from the Diwali pre Diwali prices or close to Diwali prices. They went up uh, in the first week of April as good as 15 to 20 rupees. And oil is one of the largest uh, constituent of India's imports that we. Usually do from uh, the Western world, especially. So, of course, uh, if uh, the oil is affected and all other uh, commodities are also affected, the thing is that uh, because of these, uh, the things will keep on happening. The inflation will go on rising. 
so this will lead to the inflationary pressure as well of course so let's uh, that is one topic that is one uh, share of the pie if i look at it but what exactly for us the international things will be there we will be having a few things here and there but what about us what does affect us of course as i said it affects the way we look at things the way we behave the way we spend the way we invest of course if inflation is rising the rates market rate could change the equities will correct and so many things would happen so we need to cushion our portfolio the financial portfolio hamari jama punji hamari savings hamari investments also from inflation because sometimes if you have committed certain amount and now your cost of living goes high you will not be able to devote you can say or you can say contribute as much as you want or as much you have been doing previously to your uh, current investments so you need to make sure that your investment still keeps on earning and you try to be in that cycle that uh, it does not affect your spending at all so if i talk about the us uh, comparison of how the price of a cup of a coffee has changed over time from uh, in the past 50 years from 70 to 2020 from 25 cents to 2 dollars or 5 6 dollars so that is the way the price of coffee has changed and of course uh, in india there are so many things which have changed you can say in these past not 50 but even 20 years they've gone up four five six times so what are the key things how can we cushion uh, those things or what are the points we need to look at it the point is whenever you look at your investments you look at your returns please look at the real returns inflation adjusted and other things for example uh, real return are the other things that you can earn over and above the inflation for example if your return is 5% and the inflation is 4% your real return is 1% inflation eats into your uh, earnings in other words your money is purchasing power grew by 1% only so as long as you can beat inflation you can beat your cost of living of the previous years then you can say yes i have done good in that sense of course we look at it at in a different scenario as well for example if your return is 6% you look at first as a tax adjusted return and let's suppose you are in a 30% tax bracket so 1.8 goes out 4.2 and if the inflation is uh, 5.2 your actual return is minus 1% so which is means that your money whatever you were earning is now you have to spend less in, uh, in that sense now so again uh, if the inflation was 6% your as the example i just gave your real return would be minus 1 if you look at the previous example your return is 5 inflation is 4 now return is 5 inflation is 6 the real return is minus 1 that is a loss of 1% of your money in terms of purchasing power you will have to spend more to fetch the same items what you were getting with that it's not about uh, the return part it is about uh, the percentage part which matters so the real returns are also known as the inflation adjusted returns the thing is we don't know that we are affected by it cut uh, the covid period let's talk of the normal time if you uh, see your past records if you are maintaining a day book of spending for example uh, again covid years discounted for example in may 2021 if you had your cost of living everything your kids fees ration whatever your bills everything included your home expenses domestic expenses and your life uh, uh, expenses otherwise for example if it was 50000 in today's time in may 2022 it would be 55000 if the government figure even puts it at uh, 4% or 5% or 6% of inflation your actual cost of living has risen by 10% from 50 to 55000 rupees per month so the real inflation and the government figure inflation sometimes does matter and you will say 5000 mein kya farak padta hai 5000 mein ek slip lag jati hai which can give you over a you can say a 20 year period about more than 1 crore rupees if that is invested every month and this is i am talking of one year so look at the longer perspective look at the bigger picture so 5000 har month kitne months kitne years yahi cheez shayad may 23 mein aapki 8000 ho jaye 10000 ho jaye 
कंपेयर टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन में ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर में और हो जाए तो यू आर एक्चुअली इंक्रीजिंग दैट अमाउंट वी आर स्टिल से अगर पांच हजार भी आपकी बढ़ती है फाइव थाउजेंड इज देर देन इट कैन मेक अज डिफरेंस इन योर पोर्टफोलियो इन दैट पार्ट so the thing is you have to look at your returns in terms of that that you can consistently beat inflation if your returns can't beat inflation i'm sorry to say you're living, living in a negative world because why i'm saying it is most of the indians are fond of fds fixed deposits uh, as our old uh, parents have suggested or fathers have suggested and this is one rbi data i have been sharing since uh, many many months now in my groups now in my whatsapp community wherever these sessions happen so as per the rbi's data the total money invested in fd stood at 142 lakh crore as on 11th feb this year which is almost three and a half times plus than that of entire mutual fund industry aum aum is assets under management so sare mutual fund ke assets mila do so they could be around 50 lakh crore or maybe 40 lakh crore and uh, the fd is 142 lakh crore roughly 3 and a half times plus so we all want a safety in our investments but we have to understand that fds are no longer the choice of instrument if you are still investing in fds you are losing your purchasing power theek hai kuch percentage fds ko expire dena in the form of debt may be okay for some but usually majority is not I told in many of the previous sessions. For me, PPF is the new debt. People say, "Sir, PPF me konsa zada milta hai? Seven point mani to milta hai." Arey, it is tax free, boss. If you are looking at ten percent return, up thirty percent tax bracket me ho, to apka after tax return banti seven percent. It is giving you seven point one. And then I am not saying grow from there. I am saying treat it like the new debt. Why? Because anybody. should have a mixed exposure to a equity or a debt it should never be equity hybrid and debt i would say rather for me nps is the new hybrid although it is giving much more ppf is the new debt and equity is of course remain the still the equity choice equity can be stocks equity can be mutual funds predominant of course there are multiple options but these are the shorter definitions or shorter classifications i i try to keep things simple and silly silly because as they say the kiss principle keep it simple silly so i want to keep those things simple you may have tens of options but if you are not even speaking to the basics you cannot uh, even expect uh, to you can say live uh, as per the time you have been living so this is uh, india's inflation and interest rates through the past 10 years कॉस्ट ऑफ लिविंग ऊपर जाई जाएगी इन्फ्लेशन ऊपर जाई जाएगी दे मे बी एडजस्टमेंट दे मे बी अ लिटिल बिट शॉर्ट फ्रॉम व्हाट वी लुक एट इज द ओवरऑल टोटैलिटी पिक्चर देन द सेकंड वे इज इक्विटीज फॉर बीटिंग इन्फ्लेशन एफडी से ज्यादा इक्विटी इज अ बेटर ऑप्शन ऑफ कॉस्ट गो बाय द हिस्टोरिकल डेटा इन द पास्ट 30 40 50 इयर्स इक्विटीज हैव गिवन मोर देन 12% ऑन एन एवरेज इट माइट बी इयर्स विद 20 देयर माइट बी इयर्स विद 5 But on an average, twelve percent plus has been the equity returns. So not just the positive real returns, but also outshined all assets, including debt and gold. Of course, debt is never meant to give you more than eight percent. Five to eight, four to eight percent is the new definition of debt. Gold, of course, is not a comparable thing in this class. Of course, it is an asset class, but gold we used to hedge. Hedge is you can say to you to balance debt with equity. How do you do that? For example, if your debt returns are about seven to eight percent, and your equity returns are thirteen uh, to fourteen percent, something like gold would hedge and bring your average close to ten to eleven or twelve maybe. And hybrid is already in that ten to eleven range. So this is what we mean by something like a gold, which has to be there in your exposure to portfolio. it should be a part of your portfolio and of course i have taken so many sessions over it form of etf digital gold whatever but my personal favorite still stays to be the sgb sovereign gold bonds taken a lot of sessions so i won't be wasting much time over the gold details but let's look at the equity as a, you can say s&p bc uh, 
BSE Sensex. So this is the average or CAGR returns, compounded annual growth rates from 1980 to 2022 February this year, or 28 February 2022. So inflation data adjusted average inflation is 7.61. Bank FD average 8.92. You see, hi, it's not that average because I have seen it. FDs have given close to 12, 13% as well. I have myself got the FDs in 2003, four. At this price, twelve percent, thirteen percent, it was huge. Of course, my dad used to have it at sixteen percent at that time. Uh, courtesy, he was an ex-staff member. In those uh, days, they used to have one percent extra for staff member and then one percent extra for being a senior citizen. Ultimately, both of them are not point five, point five. So he had one FD at sixteen percent also. Then gold, traditionally eight point eight two, and equity has given a return of fifteen point six. Of course, it is a volatile asset class, but then the volatility को beat करने का एक simple तरीका है to stay in with a longer period. Panic is what makes you lose equity in a flash. Panic is what makes you book losses in a flash. Patience is what makes you earn in equity over a period of time. Disciplined investment, patience in holding it. The time you stay in the market with your funds, with your stocks, whatever way. That is what will actually matter. Equities can be risky in short term. कि दो साल तीन साल के लिए करना maybe दो साल अच्छे ना जाएं तीन साल अच्छे ना जाएं. But if you look at the longer period, five to six years minimum, there are very less chances that equity आपको negative में दे. But over the period of ten years, of course, uh, there would be good average, good average that can easily beat inflation. Of course, uh, stock prices will keep on checking. कल uh, RBI ने bomb गिराया आपना repo rate बढ़ा के 40 bps का. तो चार से दो ढाई साल से चार परसेंट पे चल रहा जब से कोविड आया एंड स्टिल इट वाज गोइंग बिकॉज़ दे वांटेड टू पुट मोर मनी इन द हैंड्स ऑफ पीपल सो दैट दे हैव अ इंक्रीज परचेजिंग पावर बट आई थिंक कोविड वाला जो सिचुएशन ना दैट हैज बीन ओवर डन नाउ सो इट दिस वाज लॉन्ग ड्यू ऑफकोर्स द यूएस फेड स्टार्टेड इट लास्ट मंथ बाई रेजिंग पॉइंट एंड देन टूडे दे अगेन रेज इट Of course, India followed it. India followed, or rather, India preceded the uh, today's rate hike, and then the Bank of England also raised one percent today. So this will this is going to happen all over the world because uh, the freebies are going to diminish now. The rates would be back uh, to higher. Uh, whatever home loan home loan rates we have seen in the previous uh, few years, couple of years, they are one of the lowest. They have been one of the lowest. Of course, they'll also go on rising now. So. Yes, uh, over the long period of time, equity risk reduces and can be mitigated. Also, let me give you three healthy ways to go about equity investing. So, number one is assess your risk profile with the help of an expert. Your equity exposure how much should be? Normally, we follow the 100 minus age or 80 minus age formula, depending upon what your age is. That is the percentage you need to put in equity. Then, of course, diversification with equity oriented. There are multiple sectors which will keep on changing this. Yeah. Sectoral growth happens in cycles, so we need to be aware of it. Sub sectors को inflation से फर्क नहीं पड़ता है. Metals को शायद कई बार नहीं फर्क पड़ता. IT sector को कई बार नहीं पड़ता. Infra को नहीं पड़ता. So things will again. I'm just giving you an example. Not always that this happens. So it is not always that every sector gets corrected. Some sectors are immune sometimes, or they get very less affected. So you can diversify your equity holdings. I mean, FMM, FMCG. Some in uh, consumer index, some in uh, you can say IT, some in infra. So you can mix and match and do all those things. Then one of the best ways, third way is investing the SIP way. SIPs are a great way to increase your discipline. Of course, uh, they can give you rupee cost averaging also, and they are going to give you a lot of returns in that sense. That boon boon करके समंदर जो बनने वाले example है ना that actually happens with the amount of SIP. So why do prices keep on going high, or why does the CPI index is affected? Because the salaries go on increasing, which can help economy grow. Of course, the positive negatives are both there, helps borrowers also. So this thing will keep on getting adjusted. What prices over time, the price index will keep on rising. Then the third way is to add a little glitter to your portfolio. As I said, gold is one reason. Gold is one asset which can use to combat inflation as a hedge. Not without reason. Out of the past 40 years of gold, 32 years have been positive. 
only eight has been negative. That is the eighty twenty record. So it has been a store of wealth for Indian families. Of course, in the physical form, uh, dust is stuffed in the Indian bank lockers. But yes, sir, uh, this is the new age. This is the new digital age. You need to do in gold as a hedge and still be in the digital era by buying sovereign gold bonds. As I said, you can. Have multiple options: gold mutual fund, gold funds of funds, gold ETF, whatever way. My personal favorite is SGBs. So, gold is uh, one thing you can say uh, constant currency all over the world. It can be sold anywhere. It is is a direct hedge against the depreciation of the rupee as well. And again, as a go as a investment, gold is highly liquid and can be easily converted to cash. Of course. Uh, स्टॉक मार्केट का तो एक फंडा है ना सिंपल वे वर द गोल्ड द इक्विटी गोज डाउन द गोल्ड गोज अप दे शेयर इन वर्स रिलेशनशिप ऑफ कोर्स वी नो दैट द जंप इन गोल्ड प्राइस गोल्ड हैज आल्सो बीन फ्लक्चुएटिंग क्वाइट अ बिट क्योंकि इक्विटी बहुत वॉलेटाइल है गोल्ड भी बहुत वॉलेटाइल है दो दिन तीन दिन गिरता है चौथे पांचवें छहवें दिन राइज कर जाता है सो ऑलवेज एड सम गोल्ड टू योर पोर्टफोलियो बाय गोल्ड ईटीएफ गोल्ड फंड्स ऑफ फंड्स और द बेस्ट एसजीबी This year's SGBs 2022, FY 2022, 23. The SGBs are yet to come. Probably once the government gets over uh, from the LIC burden this month, after 17, 18 days, think of it. Because last year also the SGBs came as as late as about 22nd or 23rd of May. The first uh, tranche was launched then only. So RBI will keep on taking action. Uh, you can say uh, actions to make some corrections. They'll increase and decrease the repo rate, reverse the repo rate, the amount of money banks can keep with them, or the interest rates. Of course, it all as it is related to the borrowing of the money, so that the banks uh, can earn there, and of course related to people's purchasing power as well, and their increase or decrease of consumption. So all those things will keep on happening. Of course, when the money stays in cycle, it gives em- employment also to so many people. Then the last is preparing for your future. Inflation times can be painful when you take your monthly budget, 50 to 55 हो गया. But being prepared always helps. You don't need to just keep pace with the inflation, but you need to beat it over a period of time, and that is what is important. So India's 12-month inflation rate trend in 2021 and 22. See the trend from the last financial year, which just ended in March. Four, six, six point two, six, five point five nine, five point three, four point three, four point nine, five point six. And it is on the rise. It's almost touching seven now. So this is the Ministry of Statistics, the uh, MSPI data. So the carry home plan for today: if inflation remains high, household budget is not the only thing that will be affected. It is the common man's savings as well, and all of them mostly are dependent upon fixed instruments like FD. If you are doing that, you have to, you can say, settle for. Negative returns. Sorry for the uh, printing error here. Uh, it's not a 8.5. It is 7.1, and may, maybe the small savings are 6.8, and the bank deposits are less than six. So, with a grim scenario, the investing of the common man, the avenue to explore is the stock market in the form of mutual funds or stocks in whatever way. Investing wisely in the stock market and with minimum risk. Uh, Is the common man's best chance at beating inflation? I mean to say, the equity is the best chance to beat inflation. It need not be stocks; it can be mutual funds. Mutual fund is the way to go. As a dentist, uh, you can do trading. I don't uh, want you to discourage you. If you have time, you can do it. But if you are running a full-time clinic from nine to three, you can focus only on one thing. You can say very, very dedicatedly and profitable. And either it is your clinic or it is the stock market. So it is your choice. What do you want to do? so uh, what i want you to tell is that this was a presentation a portion of it i took up 3 uh, years back also and uh, the carry home gain is the same one from there so imagine when the interest rates were like this even then the inflation was eating up now the inflation the interest rates are low still the inflation is eating up so this will keep on happening people will have when you have higher salaries when you have uh, you can say more revenues to buy but then the prices also increase so this will keep on happening we need to understand that uh, we need to be secure we need to be sure about it that what we are going through. so i hope uh, the moral of the whole story is clear to you inflation's effect inflation affects uh, the cost of living 
and the factors are higher food costs, higher petrol costs, higher utility or your bills costs, not receiving an increased salary or an increased income, not increasing your clinic charges uh, in sync with the changing times, and higher interest rate uh, on home loans, which have been the cheapest uh, since past two, three years now. So I hope uh, this session was able to give you some uh, sense of uh, understanding of what exactly inflation does to us. So thank you so much for your patient hearing. And this is my WhatsApp community. If you are interested, you can send me a message. I'll add you over there. This is my community, which I have been running for four and a half years now. So I plan to limit it to six groups only, and the sixth group is already on. This is a totally advertisement free group where only education is the fund, and this is not a time group. So this is my YouTube channel. As on 30th April, we have 460 plus videos already on my channel. If you're not yet a subscriber, go and hit the subscribe uh, button and hit the bell icon as well. You'll be notified because I keep on posting at least three to four videos every week. This is my social media presence by my name only, DR Bhavdi, Clubhouse, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you want to connect with me, please do so. So do send me your valuable feedback on my number, personal message, SMS, WhatsApp, Facebook page, uh, wherever this session or YouTube, wherever you watch this session, do send me. Bookies and Big Bad both will be welcome in equal. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. Uh, and of course, I stop my share for questions and uh, are acknowledging the visitors on my page where this session is happening. Hello, Dr. Sonia. Uh, Ma'am, hello, Dr. Ramchandra sir. Hello, Dr. Lalit. Hello, Dr. Vrinda. Hello, Dr. Renuka. Hello, Dr. Rajinder Desai. Hello, Dr. Atamjeet. Hello, Dr. Larissa. Hello, Dr. Rishabh. Hello, Dr. SP. Thank you, Dr. Ramchandra. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Sonia, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Rajinder Desai, what about parking in liquid fund? The question is, what about parking in liquid fund? Uh, liquid fund is still going to be a debt option only. And uh, debt has never the potential to beat inflation in today's time. Especially if the inflation, you just saw the figure at 6.9%. The debt returns are already close to only 5.8, 5.9, less than 6. So you're starting off already with a negative page. And then you remember the after-tax returns. If your after-tax returns are close to 4%, inflation is 7%, you're already minus 3%. So I don't see any benefit in investing in liquid funds. Debt is already going through, debt and liquid are, is already going through a very, very bad patch, very bad cycle. And uh, I don't recommend at all in current inflationary times to invest in a liquid fund or a debt fund. And I, I will personally not do it. However, you are free to do it. I also to FDC. But the RBA data says uh, people don't listen to anyone. Of course, uh, they have 3.56 3. times more uh, of your, uh, you can say, money of India's money is in FD rather than the mutual fund industry. And mutual fund industry is supposed to be safer than the stock market at least. But still, uh, the FD, FD, FD is going on everywhere. So uh, instead of saving, uh, again, I am a big fan of high earning saving bank accounts, which give me a cushion of ATTTA as well. So if my money being liquid is earning 7%, which is way more than the debt which can offer, plus comes with a cushion of ATTTA of 10,000, why would I not keep that money in a high earning savings bank account, especially the emergency fund, we all call it. Why do I keep it in a liquid fund bound? Which is again, uh, you can say subject to fluctuation or returns. So I don't see any sense in that. Again, a personal choice, but that is what my opinion. I have been shouting about uh, keeping it in high, saving, high earning savings bank account since four years now. Only last year, somebody acknowledged on economic times also about this option. Because this was the option I've been using for four and a half, half or five years. Now, so uh, I don't see any benefit or any loss in this because I have made money through that part, and of course, uh, giving lesser amount of tax in bargain. In that sense. So thank you so much, Dr. Rajinder, for asking that question. So any more question? I'm here for two minutes. Um, friends, uh, this series is going to come to an end uh, in the next episode, eight episodes. Practically, you can say two months or eight episodes. So. Uh, after that, probably I'll be having short videos, but not as a live, as a pre-recorded videos. There will be different series. So make uh, use of these uh, 
episodes whatever they are remaining today's 18th episode i'll be back uh, next thursday with the 19th episode of uh, thunder thursdays and of course on monday with the 19th episode of miraculous mondays or uh, management mondays which wherein we take the practice management and the medical legal sessions so thank you so much if there are no questions i'll tie uh, i'd like to say goodbye so uh, thank you so much bye bye take care have a great weekend ahead